So these are brand new Gen 5 drives from Team Group. These are T-Force Z540. I have tested the one and two terabyte versions and you can see how big of a performance difference is between the one and two terabyte models. And remember, this is the A440, the previous version. This is a Gen 4. Incredible drive for the price point, especially the terabyte written specs. But now we have a Gen 5 X4 drive. So four lanes on Gen 5 which is gonna give us a lot of speed. Team Group also sent me some bad boys. So you're gonna sandwich your SSD in there together. Are they carrying over all the benefits to the new generation? Do you actually need this? Well, we're gonna find out as well. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get 25% off. Use your preferred payment method including PayPal or bank card. Go to your orders and copy the key. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10 but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. Or you can buy Windows 11 Pro key instead. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get 25% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. Now if you look at the drive very closely, you can see that the drive is dual sided. Bear that in mind if you want to slot it into certain slots that only support one sided NVMEs. The one terabyte and two terabyte version, they have very similar amount of chips on both sides. So it doesn't matter if you go with a lower capacity, they're still both dual sided. Now, the interesting thing is this little copper heatsink sticker comes separately in the packet, so you're gonna have to apply it yourself. I highly recommend you do that because it spreads the heat a little bit more evenly on the, the SSD. Now, Team Group also sent me these insane heat sinks. So these are called the Dark Airflow 1 PCI Gen 5 heat sinks for the SSDs. As you can see, there's two heat sinks that go around. You've got a little fan, and then a four pin PWM connector. Mostly this is gonna cool the top side of the NVMe, but it does slot underneath as well and get some of it underneath there as well. So you're gonna sandwich your SSD in there together. But I just did some price comparison. Whenever you're watching this, it might be slightly different, but the two terabyte version is $260. If you look at the two terabyte Gen 5 SSDs, what are out there, as you can see, the Crucial One T700 is a little bit more expensive. Sabrent One is quite a bit more expensive. Bear in mind, the 705 from Crucial is even more expensive. The 705, look at that. That is quite a bit more expensive there as well. And the four terabyte version here is even better price per terabyte. So if you look at the two one, the four one is $470 compared to if you got two of the two, which would be 500 and something. So the best price per terabyte is on the four terabyte one, which is insane. DRAM capacity is not actually mentioned on the team group's own specification. The DRAM cache, they say, yes, but I had to find it on Tech Power Up, And here we can see that interestingly on one terabyte model, we have two gigabytes of LPDDR4 DRAM, which actually gives it quite a bit of performance. For example, the Crucial T705 that we tested out a few videos ago, that one only has a gigabyte per terabyte. So here, Team Group is doubling the DRAM cache per terabyte. As you can see, the two terabyte version here has a four gigabytes of DDDR4 four, which is very interesting. And they've got no information on the four terabyte one, but I assume that's gonna be eight gigabytes then, but I'm not sure. You'll see in benchmarks how this is gonna make sense now. But firstly, let's take a look at some of the sequential read and write speeds. On the packet, it says that you can get up to 12.4 gigabytes per second read and 1.8 gigabytes per second write speeds. So in terms of the two terabyte one, as you can see, we're literally getting 12,400 gigabytes per second read speeds. The one terabyte one is slightly slower, about 700 megabytes slower, but really, really fast. Faster than the 880 Legend 970, but not quite as fast as the Crucial T705. If you're looking at the write speeds, you can see that the two terabyte one has an even bigger leap now around 11.7 gigabytes per second. Slightly slower what they say on the box, but still incredibly fast. And right on top of the charts there, one of the best uh, Gen 5 NVMEs I have tried. The one terabyte one is less than 10 gigabytes per second. Insane again. Now, moving on to Quick System Benchmark, which basically tests the drive as a secondary drive in your laptop, in your system, where you do very light tasks. You're not gonna run programs, or operating system on it. You're just opening documents, you're moving some photos around, doing very light 
kind of a workload on there. And here we can see that the two terabyte one is very very close there with the crucial t705 and within one percent of it those are one of the best drives that i have tested and as you can see the one terabyte one is a little bit slower still very very impressive but i would have expected slightly faster speeds than the samsung 990 evo which is a cheaper drive and a kind of a hybrid drive only two lanes of gen 5 but before was very similarly in here so for a just secondary drive i don't think this drive is worth it and some of the other gen 4 drives perhaps a better price for the performance next a data drive benchmark and this tests the drive as storing the data so how fast does it take to access certain data from the drive and writing data on it so this is again not running programs on operating systems on but perhaps a secondary drive that stores more data on it. Kind of like an asset drive in a creative workflow where you put large assets on it and you access them, but you're not like kind of actively working with programs or, you know, systems. It's a little bit more load on this as a quick system drive. And here we can see the two terabyte version is the fastest drive there. Very much because of the DRAM cache there. What I have found in this benchmark is that the larger the capacity and the larger the DRAM cache, the better it performs. As you can see, Crucial T705, that is very similar to performing drive, but because it has less DRAM cache, it performs slightly slower. So the 2 terabyte Z5 Z540 is very, very fast. And you can see how big of a performance difference is between the one and two terabyte models. It's like 40% difference there. As you can see, the one terabyte one performs only somewhere around the top gen four drives, not that big of a difference, but the two terabyte version performs right on top of the pack there with the other gen five drives. Moving on to full system drive benchmark and this benchmark tests these drives as an operating system where you're running programs or operating system. So a little bit more heavy workload, lots of random read and writes all over the drive. And here we can see this is a very good drive for your operating system. It is better than the Gen 4 drives. The one terabyte version kind of isn't. Uh, so if you're thinking about just getting a operating system or prog programs drive, the Solidime P44 Pro one terabyte one is only a few percent slower as you can see there, but a much better price for the performance. The two terabyte version though here is very interesting because of the fast DRAM, the operating system will run probably faster there, but within 1% of the best drive that I have ever tested, which is the Crucial T705. Again, interesting that the one and two terabyte versions perform so differently. There is roughly about 20% difference between these two drives. So whether you're getting the two terabyte version, it does actually perform better in the real world running an operating system and programs on it is very interesting now this is a drive performance consistency test this tests the drive for about 19 hours depending on the drive speeds i tested the one terabyte one for uh 10 and a half hours i you can see the screen recording and it just absolutely packs the drive for a very very long time it writes over 20 terabytes of data on it it's very heavy on the read and write speeds it tests the drive to see how good are the sustained speeds on the drive how well can it keep up with a very intense load now combining this test as well as the full, full system drive benchmark and data drive benchmark we can kind of gather which drives are better for our operating system and our project drives for example where we have large asset assets on them and we're working with them actively so here you can see that the two terabyte version is so much better than the one terabyte version. Very close to three times the performance. And that's insane. I couldn't believe it and I had to test it again. But the consistency test with the two terabyte version is so much better. Again, probably because of the DRAM cache that helps you with it. It's got a lot more of it. You know, taking some of the loads and writing the files a lot faster onto the drive. And you've got more space on it than the one terabyte one. But you can see... This is a night and day in terms of consistency test between one and two terabyte versions, which brings us to a very interesting point. You can see that the one terabyte drives, there's not that many on the top there. There's the 990 Pro there that is still faster. So if you're thinking about getting the one terabyte version of this Z540, 
maybe not worth it. I'd probably go with a Gen 4. If you're going with a two terabyte capacity, you start to get a lot more performance than the one terabyte one. So that's very helpful to test one and two terabyte capacities because they perform so differently. I've never really seen it that different, but this really shows us here a big difference. The two terabyte version is truly amazing and performs right on the top of the chart. Not quite as fast as the Crucials T705, but still very, very impressive. Bear in mind, it is actually cheaper as well. Now, terabyte written spec is the amount of file storage capacity you can actually write onto the SSD before the SSD come, goes, okay, see you later, I'm done. Because every cell in that chip actually can be written over a certain amount of time. This SSD is rated 600 terabytes per one terabyte, and it doubles with two and then quadruples with four terabytes. So four terabytes is rated at 2,400 terabyte spec. But if you remember the previous version, the Z440, which I'll leave in the description below if you still want to check it out because it's still very good price for the performance because that was rated 1,800 terabytes per one terabyte which means that for the next five years, you can fill this one terabyte drive every single day. And the same with the two terabyte one for the next five years, and it's still gonna be okay with this. So that rating is absolutely insane, which is three times higher than what we get with the newer version. So it's a little bit of a shame that the Z540, the new generation with Gen 5, is actually a lower terabyte written spec. But then, what about the temperatures and this cooler then? Now, before I attach the cooler, I wanted to see if we actually need to cool the SSD down. So, what I did was I tested the one terabyte drive for about 10 hours to see what would be the temperatures because you're absolutely writing loads of files on it and that's very intense for the drive and usually the drives go you know very very hot so the way i tested it was this was just on an onboard motherboard heatsink on my asus proad x670e motherboard and there was just a little fan case fan that was blowing air over it so i wanted to make sure that there is some airflow over it it wasn't necessarily something insane just a fan on it but there was some airflow over it and I can see that the temperatures didn't go past 60 degrees in all of these tests over 10 hours, which made me think that is very good temperature for the NAND. I don't think we need it. So I did the same thing on the two terabyte one to see if there is any difference if we you know go with a higher capacity perhaps that one was any better and it was a little bit hotter the two terabyte one actually went to 73 degrees over this time period but that's still not as hot as you might think and not near the you know 100 degrees so your motherboard heatsink is actually all right you don't necessarily need this big airflow but there is a but now because I didn't have a GPU installed in that case, there wasn't any other heat source in there. If you've got a GPU in there, that's gonna give a lot more heat to these SSDs underneath there, and you might need the heatsink, but you can only install this in heatsink when you install it to the top slot because any of the bottom slot gen 5 slots say bye bye to your gpu because your gpu won't fit so i would say that before you buy the heatsink just get yourself the drive mounted to your motherboard heatsink and then test it out with the motherboard and see what the temperatures are like even if you run it on the top slot where gpu heat maybe goes in there and heats it up a little bit more you'll never know you might not actually need that heating because no one wants to buy stuff that you don't need and then when you still find that oh this is quite warm and perhaps you need the heatsink then purchase this t-force dark airflow one which is actually a pretty cool design and very good cooler for that which will get rid of the heat a little bit better so in conclusion is this a good drive to consider and i'd say yes but if you're considering the one terabyte drive i don't really see the point why would you need that over the gen 4 high-end drive that is actually cheaper like the solidine p44 pro samsung 990 pro or even the samsung 990 evo which is a kind of a mixed drive is a little bit very close to the performance of the one terabyte one but this drive is just a little bit more expensive for no reason really it only starts to make sense when you go with a two terabyte version and now we start to see huge performance leap over the gen 4. If you do want to do that definitely worth checking out as well as the 4. When you go with the 2 and you're thinking about getting two of them I highly recommend getting one higher capacity like the four terabyte one because the performance will be at least the same or maybe even slightly faster. I haven't tested it yet. If the pattern continues 
what we've seen in this video the four terabyte model is a little bit faster so go check it out in the description below where you can also find some best bang for buck pc build guides if you want to build yourself one they're completely free i left them down there as well as minect if you want to reach out to me i'll get back to all of my minect messages thanks guys for watching and i'll see you next time